Hi, it's Liz and today we're going to be talking about sewing 101, sewing supplies 101. So if you have very limited amount of sewing experience and you're thinking about getting a machine or you already have a machine, here are some other things that can help with your sewing journey. This video is for you. So if you haven't bought a machine yet or do have a machine, just some things to think about. Of course, your sewing machine, you want to have a straight stitch, you want to be able to have it that you're able to go backward and forward on it so you're able to lock your stitch in. Uh, it is really nice to have a zigzag stitch because then you can use different fabrics like stretchy fabric needs a zigzag stitch or if you're having a material like linen that tends to fray a lot you want to have a zigzag so you can clean up those edges. So if you do have just a machine that just has a straight stitch and it can lock both sides, you can also get these pinking shears and these pinking shears have teeth on them. And I do not recommend you getting them uh, used unless they're already really sharp because I got these ones used thinking, oh, I'll just go to the uh, knife store to get them sharpened and they wouldn't sharpen them for you. So you'd have to file them individually. So you can use pinking shears if you just have a machine that stitches front and back and doesn't have a zigzag pattern. Another thing to think about with your machine is if you're able to take off the foot at the bottom so you're able to put different attachments on it. So that makes sense if you're going to be using something you can put a zipper foot attachment to it onto it. If you're getting more fancier down the road you can do rolled hems, you can do all sorts of different things. So the sewing machine I have is the same one that my dad bought me when I was like 14 years old. It works out really great. It has the straight stitch, the zigzag stitch, so many other stitches. Some of them I have never used. You can also do buttonholes. So it has four steps to making a buttonhole. So that is really great. I like, that's why I like the machine. You can also do making your stitch length a longer or shorter, just depending if you're going to be gathering stitches as well. So the first item are going to be your scissors. Now these scissors are not your kitchen scissors and they're not your crafting scissors. They're specific to fabric. I like something really long um, so that I'm able to get a good nice full length. It's not too too heavy but uh, I found these at a thrift store and then I just went to my knife shop and they sent them away to get them sharpened and they work really well. So I'm able to draw onto fabric and then cut them out. So that works really well for like patterns or anything like that. But if I'm wanting to do something about more straight edge, if I'm making say like placemats or napkins or something, you can definitely use a rotary cutter. It just has a blade that comes out and then you pop that in. Then of course you're gonna need a cutting mat as well. So you can get different styles of cutting mats, really small, really large. So I rather get something a lot bigger then I'm able to make it bigger projects because if you do have a small cutting mat it really does limit your projects but if you're just making things like like scrunchies or little face cloths or anything like that you really don't need a huge mat. So I would say the most essential item in here is going to be your seam ripper and you're going to make lots and lots of mistakes and you're just going to rip it rip it back, do it again, rip it back, do it again. So it just has a little hook on it. It doesn't rip the fabric. It will if you're not careful, but um, these do have covers on them, but I don't know where mine are. So yeah, seam rippers are definitely an essential thing. So if I was just stranded on a desert island and I was like, you have electricity for some reason, you have a sewing machine, I'd be like, I would want my scissors and I would want a seam ripper if I had unlimited amount of thread because then I'll be able just to do those little basic things. Along with big scissors for cutting fabric, I would also get a pair of small scissors. Doesn't have to be these fancy ones that go like this. They can just be really basic small scissors and I just like to have them next to me. Just if there's loose fabric or thread, then I can just give them a little snip. I don't have to take out my big cutting scissors for my fabric and I, um, it just makes it a lot, a lot quicker and easier. 
So it really just depends on what your intention is for the sewing machine and it can really evolve. So not really limiting yourself to what you're wanting to do right now in this time. But some other options can be, if you're gonna think about doing it from a pattern, then you're gonna want to pin down the pattern. So you're gonna need pins. You're gonna want to make sure that you give it a really good press. So of course, a um, iron is really essential and also um, an ironing mat or an ironing board because you're able to press things really nice and cleanly and that will really help get those really nice edges that you're looking for when you're sewing because you're basically just pressing it and then sewing it um, you're able to do lots of pinning but a lot of the time um, the ironing is way more efficient and you can get yourself an ironing board or an ironing mat if you don't have the space. And the ironing mat is just so that it can take the heat. Um, so, cause if you're doing it, say if you're ironing on the floor, uh, over time that heat will, res will transfer to your floor every time and could start warping whatever you have on your floor. So you do wanna have some sort of protected barrier from that. So I know with certain patterns that you can't get, you have to clear off your whole dining room table just to lay it all out and pin it all down. Uh, that's completely normal, I would say. <laughs> or you just do it on the floor as well. But you really want to make sure that there's some sort of protection when you're ironing your pieces. So when you have your pattern down, if you are using a pattern, you definitely don't have to. But if you are using a pattern, it does help. Uh, we're gonna also think about how, how to trace those pieces. So traditionally, you know, I've seen where they've used chalk. Um, so you could use something like this. I don't know where this one is from um, because I got it from a thrift store, but they're really, they're Taylor's chalk and they're really nice and thin and you can trace all around it. Then you can either cut it out or if you're piecing them like two sides together, you can base stitch it, which just means that you're going to do a small um, long stitch by hand around it and then you can cut it out. So another option would be these dressmaker uh, pencil crayons I would say and then you can trace around it make sure you have a nice good tip and then afterwards you can kind of just brush it away. I also like these ends when I clean out my sewing machine just kind of getting all that fluff out of some of the areas for the needle. So the other option would be to use a pen. The only thing with the pen is that you have to make sure that it's like, how does it come off? And depending on the type of material you use. And I find the pens, for me at least, they just don't last as long. I've been using a lot of the chalk. Um, just also depends on the type of project. If it's something like very finicky, thin, thin, thin lines, I'll use a really thin piece of chalk. If it's um, something that can have a lot of leniency and a little bit of wiggle room, I can use one of these. Um, and then just kind of basing it on that because every time you have like a thick line, it definitely will add, add dimension to your end product. So say if you're, let's say you got really into it and you're building yourself an amazing shirt, a close knit, tight, everything has to be perfect type of shirt. You did all your measurements, you did all that, but because your, your lines are really thick when you cut it out, it added a couple, um, you know, millimeters to it and therefore it gives you a different dimension. So if you're making something that you probably won't see the other side of it, like scrunchies are a good one. If you're making bags that are lined, you can also just use like a regular pencil crayon or something that makes sure you doesn't bleed through, you know, to the other backside of your table or, or your floor, but making sure that, um, and just cut around it. Um, and that's okay to kind of use what you have. You probably have a lot of good stuff laying around. You just kind of, especially when you're first starting out, definitely use what you have. Okay, when I first started off, I was like, oh, I need all those supplies. And you really don't. You need your sewing machine, you need your thread, you need fabric scissors, an iron's always great. And really depending on what you're gonna make, uh, you can, you know, get a pin cushion with needles as well. I found a video and I really wanted to make it and it was a pin cushion 
for your wrist. Now you don't even have to have a sewing machine. This is all kind of hand stitched because this one is actually, if you look at it quite closely, it's not even put together right. It's just kind of, I was trying to do everything I could to keep the batting inside. You could use batting from, you know, scraps of fabric. You just chop it up really fine. You can put it um, from an old, uh, a stuffed animal. You can, you can do anything that you can put in there. Um, and I tried to do this one and it's just really great to have it on your wrist you really try to not have pins in your mouth uh, that is a big thing for me when I first started I was you know just not even consciously doing it just subconsciously I'm working away trying to figure it all out feeling overwhelmed and having those pins in your mouth and sometimes you just don't want any anything to go on so really uh, building these and just this one's a bit cleaner but I just got a bangle from the thrift store and then scrap piece of fabric and just tried my best to stuff it in and kind of make it the shape that I want. So it just sits down there really nicely. Lots of little loose ends of fabric or thread, but it's just super simple. So really making sure I'm not putting any pins in my mouth. You can make your own little pin cushion. You can see this one. I was just practicing making lines on, but it was just, uh, I have some fluff material. It's not super, super dense, but it's good enough that the pins aren't poking through. But you could just do something very basic. I also found this is not an essential thing, but if you are practicing making your straight lines, it's gonna get better with time, but you can also use like a measuring gauge. So it's really small. I found this at the thrift store as well. There's lots of people in my area that do lots of crafting. Even if you don't have a sewing machine, really check out your local community because maybe they'll have access to a sewing machine or a serger or maybe an embroider machine like I know our local makerspace has their own sewing machines and sergers so you can go there you can get a monthly membership or yearly I don't know how they do it there but then you have access to it you can bring your project down you know you can get help with it hopefully and the, um, they'll teach you you know how to thread because sergers are a whole different game but if um, you know just if there's any you don't have to deal with any of the maintenance of the sewing machine. So just something to think about a little bit more long term with the sewing machine. It is a machine so it does have grinds and gears so they will eventually need to be lubricated. Have a look at your maintenance manual. Also you're able, I think for all machines but maybe not, you're able to change out your needles. So usually your machine comes with like a universal needle which is sort of okay for all fabrics. Like you're not gonna want to do your first pair of jeans. You can on a universal needle, but you can also get like a denim needle. Or if it's really, really thick, then you know, there's different types of needles for stretchy material, different types of needles for different projects. But overall, you can just use a universal needle. So over time, those needles are gonna get worn down and you'll just have to replace it. You'll kind of notice your fabric or your machine seems a little bit different, then that might be why if it's just not catching as well. So when you get your machine, I would just figure out how to put in your thread, your machine, your bobbin for the machine, uh, and and how to, um, like, you, it usually comes with pre spooled bobbin, but it is really good to learn how to spool your own bobbin because you are going to run out of it. Or if you want to change it a different color of thread, then that's also a good thing. So, getting those things, um, just practicing those things, and then just getting, make something really simple. I would suggest find something that motivates you to sew. If you're like, if I say to you, you just practice straight line sewing. If that motivates you, great. If you're like, I don't want to do that, then find something that really motivates you. Find a pattern, find some sort of shape that you want to make, and then just do it. You can go to the thrift store, get some fabric. Don't even worry about your fabric right now, unless it's really a uh, concern of yours or if you're wanting something really really stretchy that's another thing that you might want to learn down the road but if you're motivated to learn stretchy fabric then go ahead and do it so start researching start figuring out because the more mistakes you learn 
is how you're gonna grow with your sewing projects. So make all those mistakes. It doesn't all have to be perfect. It doesn't all have to look a certain way. Of course, we're gonna want that eventually. Sewing is really a process. It really keeps going and there's so much to learn. There's so much to grow. And you think that like, oh, if I just learn this, then I'll be really good at this. Then you get inspired to do something else. So a little bit about my story, my dad, sent me to some sewing classes from this lady down the road. I made bags, but nothing really motivated me. I like to do my own thing, but it wasn't like I was making elaborate dresses or skirts or anything like that. I made a couple of skirts and uh, a couple of things, but nothing that kept me going. So I actually came back to it in my 30s and started like making eco-friendly products and started sewing away. Then you kind of get on to like, I saw somebody making a corset. I was like, you can make corsets. And so then that took me on that for that little bit of my chapter of my life. I made a little bit of like just personal corsets and they're not great by any means. I learned a ton. I did not do zippers before and I had to put in a zipper. So for these corsets, I went to the fabric store and just got muslin, which is like a cotton woven fabric. And so I started making corsets out of those for inexpensive, making sure the measurements and getting some advice. And then you build up and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to use this a little bit more expensive fabric. And then I still have my most expensive fabric that I still haven't made my corset but I'm sure it will come to one day but just getting that process the pattern pieces because they're talking about boning like the structure there's actual I was using zip ties but you can buy even more expensive stuff it's just a lot of process through that too though I was also went on marketplace and I found a serger. So sergers just make this uh, clean cut border around using four different, four or five different spools of thread. And then it also cuts your fabric as you're going along. The serger just makes it really easy if you're going to be doing a lot of stretchy fabric, if you're going to be doing like I can do cheesecloth through the serger. So with my first serger, I bought it off of marketplace. I think it was like 50 bucks. It was an old older serger but it had all the same features that I needed. I just needed it to cut and go through and I just took it to my local sewing mechanic and she fixed it up and got every, all the tensions right and everything like that and I've used that for a couple of years. Um, that one kind of bit the dust but then I upgraded because I knew the value and I knew what to, I liked and what I was looking for. And then in that time frame, I also got into, wouldn't it be neat for doing, uh, this is pre-pandemic, for doing eco-friendly products and I do some embroidery on them. And then, uh, so I brought a, an embroidery machine and that's been a huge learning curve as well. Um, I did, you know, a whole bunch of embroidered bags for my family and just kind of went that direction. So when I went to the thrift store, I, I go to the thrift store quite often, but it had these sewing machines. And so over the couple of years, I have acquired two more sewing machines and they were really great. Um, and they still work. It's just, you have to think about so older sewing machines machines, you're going to need certain parts and hopefully you can find it. Both of these two still run, which is great. Um, and they provide different characteristics. So, so the older sewing machines are really great for denim or something really thick and compressed. Um, just because they're able, it's more of a workhorse. You can change the needle to get like a leather needle even, and then you can run it through. So at that time I was doing archery and I wanted to make an arm band for my arm and I didn't want to buy it I wanted to make it so I got like an old leather jacket and started cutting it up and then using my sewing machine and my grandma maker and stuff I was able to make um, like an arm leather band and see what I liked about it what I didn't like about it make those changes again and just continue that process they are so pretty to look at and they do have like a full case that I could travel with it <laughs> which is a neat story that people can do I guess um, so I just use the same bobbins as I do for that those machines as my machines as well and it's just really straightforward and simple so let's just recap if you have a sewing machine you have thread you have your bobbin with thread in it fabric scissors a seam ripper 
and iron something to iron on like an ironing mat or an ironing board and something to trace around a pattern if you're going to choose a pattern something you're going to make you can just even use a marker or some chalk so a lot of times it's just getting over that first initial process feeling frustrated it didn't work out you don't know what you were doing you reread the instructions or you rip it back figuring out it thought it was going to be a different way the fabric was going to behave a different way something's going to happen you kind of put it away you come back to it you try again and like my first couple ones I did some Japanese aprons so you have the apron and then you have the crisscross at the back of course you have things like gathers and all those different things and that's a new skill that you're gonna learn and then you know what when you make one then you make another one and then it just keeps getting better and then you, those skills are transferable so you're not gonna make aprons all the time probably unless that's a business but maybe you're gonna make a gathered skirt you can make gathered ruffles for certain things and the list keeps going on maybe you're gonna do some lacing like we're yeah <laughs> it just keeps going all right so i hope you have fun and i'll talk to you later bye